In this video, you're gonna learn how to set up YARGs for the weather app, and you're gonna learn how to encode user input. And that is gonna be really important for our application. The user is not gonna type their encoded address into the terminal. Instead, they're gonna be typing in a plain text address, like 1301 space Lombard space street. Now this is not gonna work for our URL. We need to encode those special characters like the space, replacing them with percent %20. Now, percent %20 is the special character for the space. Other special characters have different encoding values. We're gonna learn how to encode and decode strings so we can set up this URL to be dynamic. It's gonna be based off of the address provided in the terminal. That's all gonna happen in this video. By the end, you'll be able to type in any address you like, and you'll see the formatted address, the latitude, and the longitude. Before we can get started doing any encoding, we have to get the address from the user. And before we can set up YARGs, we have to install it. So that's exactly what I want to do first. In the terminal, I'm going to run npm install. The module name is YARGs, and we're looking for version 4.8.1, which is the latest version at the time of this filming. I am going to use the save flag to run this installation. Now the save flag is great because as you remember, it updates the package.json file. And that's exactly what we want. This means we can get rid of the node modules folder, which takes up a ton of space, but we can always regenerate it using npm install. If you run npm install without anything else, no other module names or flags, it's gonna dig through that package.json file, looking for all the modules to install, and it'll install them. Recreating your node modules folder exactly as you left it. Now we don't have to wait for this installation to complete because we still have quite a bit of configuration to do. So over in app.js, we can get started by first loading in yargs. I'm gonna make a constant called yargs, setting it equal to require yargs just like this. Now we can go ahead and actually do that configuration. Down below, we're gonna make another constant called argv. This is gonna be the object that stores the final parsed output. That's gonna take the input from the process variable, pass it through yargs, and the result will be right here. This is gonna get set equal to yargs, and now we can start adding some calls. Now, when we created the notes app, we had various commands. You could add a note, and that required some arguments. You could list a note, which required just the title. You could list all notes, which didn't require any arguments, and we specified all of that inside of yargs. For the weather app, the configuration is gonna be a lot simpler. There is no command. The only command would be get weather, but if we only have one, why even make someone type it? In our case, when a user wants to fetch the weather, all they're gonna do is type node app.js followed by the address flag, just like this. Then they can type their address inside of quotes. In my case, it could be something like 1301 Lombard Street. Once again, that is not my real address. But this is exactly how the command is gonna get executed. There's no need for an actual command like fetch weather. We go right from the file name right into our arguments. To configure that, things are gonna look a little different but still pretty similar. I'm gonna get started by calling dot options, which is gonna let us configure some top level options. In our case, we're gonna pass in an object where we configure all of the options we need. Now I'm gonna format this like I do for all of my chained calls where I move the call to the next line and I indent it like this. Now we can set up our options and in this case, we just have one. It's gonna be that A option. A is gonna be short for address. I could either type address here and I could put A in the alias or I could put A here and type address in the alias. In this case, I'm gonna put A right here. Next up, I can go ahead and provide that empty object and we're gonna go through the same exact options we used inside of the notes app. We are gonna demand it. If you're gonna fetch the weather, we need an address to fetch the weather for. So I'll set demand equal to true. Next up, we can set an alias. I'm gonna set alias equal to address. And finally, we'll set describe. We can set describe to anything we think would be useful. In this case, I'm gonna go with address to fetch weather for perfect. Now these are the three options we provided for the notes app, but I'm gonna add a fourth one to make our yargs configuration for the weather app even more foolproof. This is gonna be an option called string. Now string takes a Boolean either true or false. In our case, we want true to be the value. This tells yargs to always, always parse the A or address argument as a string as opposed to something else, like a number or a Boolean. 
Back in the terminal, if I were to delete the actual string address, Yargs would still accept this. It would just think I'm trying to add a Boolean flag, which could be useful in some situations. For example, do I want to fetch in Celsius or in Fahrenheit? But in our case, we don't need any sort of true false flag. We need some data. So we're going to set string to true to make sure we get that data. Now that we have our options configuration in place, we can go ahead and add a couple other calls that we've explored. I'm going to add help, calling it like this, which adds the help flag. This is really useful, especially when someone is first using a command. And then we can access .argv, which takes all of this configuration, runs it through our arguments, and stores the result right here in the argv variable. Now, the help method adds that help argument. We can also add an alias for it right afterwards by calling dot alias. Now, dot alias takes two arguments, the actual argument that you want to set an alias for and the alias. In our case, we already have help registered. It gets registered when we call help. And we're going to set an alias, which will just be the letter H. Awesome. Now, we have all sorts of really great configurations set up for the weather app. For example, over inside of the terminal, I can now run help. I can see all of the help information for this application. I could also use the shortcut hyphen H and I get the exact same data back. Now the address is also getting passed through, but we don't print it to the screen. So I'm going to take a quick moment to do just that. Right after the configuration, let's use console.log to print the entire argv variable to the screen. This is going to include everything that got parsed by yargs. Let's go ahead and rerun it, this time passing in an address. I'm going to use the A flag and specifying something like 1301 Lombard Street, closing the quotes and hitting enter. When I do this, we get our object and right here we have 1301 Lombard Street, the plain text address. Now down below, we happen to fetch the latitude and longitude for that address, but that's just because we have it hard coded right here. I am going to still need to make some changes in order to get the address the one that got typed inside of the argument to be the address that shows up right here. To explore how to encode and decode strings, we're going to head into the terminal. I'm going to clear the screen using clear, and then we can boot up a node process by typing node. We've explored this in the past. Right in here, we can run any statements we like. When I'm exploring a really basic node or JavaScript feature, I like to mess around in here first, and then I go ahead and add it into the actual application. In our case, we're going to look at two functions encode URI component and decode URI component. Let's get started with encoding first. The method itself is called encode URI component, encode URI in uppercase component, and it takes just one argument, the string you want to encode. In our case, that string is going to be the address, something like 1301 space Lombard space street space Philadelphia. When I actually run this address through encode URI component by hitting enter, I get the encoded version back. Right here, you can see all of the spaces, like the space between 1301 and Lombard, have been replaced with their encoded character. And for the case of the space, it is percent %20. And this is fantastic. By passing our string through encode URI component, we're creating something that's ready to get injected right into the URL so we can fire off that dynamic request. Now, the alternative to encode URI component is decode URI component. Decode URI component. This is going to take an encoded string like the one here and to take all the special characters like percent %20 and convert them back into their original values. In this case, space. Inside of decode URI component, once again, we're just going to pass a string. Let's go ahead and type our first and last name. In my case, it's Andrew. And instead of a space between them, I'm going to add percent %20 which we know is the encoded character for a space. And since we're trying to decode something, it's important to have some encoded characters in here. Once yours looks like this with your first and last name, you can go ahead and hit enter. And what we get back is the decoded version. Right here, I have Andrew Mead with the percent %20 being replaced by the space, exactly what we expected. This is how we can encode and decode URI components in our app. Now your challenge for this video is gonna be this. What I want you to do is pull the address out of argv. We already saw that it's there. I want you to encode it and I want you to inject it right here, replacing everything that I currently have highlighted. This is going to essentially create that dynamic request we've been talking about. Someone will be able to type in any address they want, whether it's an address or a zip code or a city state combination, and they'll be able to fetch the formatted address, the latitude and the longitude. 
take a few moments to knock that out. You're going to need to call encode URI component passing in the address. Then you're going to want to inject that result right here inside of the URL. You can use template strings. Currently we're using regular strings, but feel free to swap that out. When you're done, go ahead and test it. Type in your home address over in the terminal. Make sure you get the proper formatted address as well as a latitude and longitude, and then try somewhere else completely to make sure you get a different result. When you're done, you can go ahead and click play. How'd it go? Hopefully you were able to encode that address, get it to show up inside of the URL, and then you were able to make dynamic location requests from the terminal. In order to get started, the first thing I'm gonna do is get the encoded address. Let's make a variable called encoded address where we can store that result. I'm gonna set this equal to the return value from the method we just explored over in the terminal, encode URI component. This is gonna take the plain text address and return the encoded result. Now we do need to pass in the string and we have that available on argv.a, which is the alias. You could also use dot address both are going to work the same. I'm going to go ahead and use dot address. And now we have that encoded result. All that's left to do is inject it inside of the URL string. Currently, I'm using a regular string. I'm going to swap this out for a template string so I can inject a variable inside of it. Perfect. Now that we have a template string, we can highlight the static address, which ends at Philadelphia and goes up to the equal sign and remove it. And then here, instead of typing in a static address, we can inject the dynamic variable inside of my curly braces, encoded address. Excellent. With this in place, we are now done. We get the address from the terminal, we encode it, and we use that inside of our geocode call. So the formatted address, latitude, and longitude should match up. Over inside of the terminal, I'm gonna shut down node by using control C twice and use clear to clear the terminal output. Then I can go ahead and run our app using node, app.js, passing in either the A or address flag. In this case, I'll just use A. Then I can go ahead and type in an address. I'm going to use one of my old addresses, 1614 South Broad Street, Philadelphia. Awesome. Go ahead and type in either your current or a previous address. When you run it, you should have that small delay while we fetch the data from the geocode URL. In this case, you can see it's actually taking a little longer than I would expect, about three or four seconds, but we do get the address back. Here we have the formatted address with the proper zip code, state, and country. We also have the latitude and longitude showing up great. Over inside of the terminal, I'm going to try a few other examples. For example, a town in Pennsylvania called Chalfont. I can type in Chalfont PA which is not a complete address, but the Google Geocode API is gonna convert it into the closest thing. In this case, it's essentially the address of the town. Chalfont PA 18914 is the zip with the state USA. Right here, I have the general latitude and longitude data for that town. And this is gonna be fine for fetching weather data. The weather isn't exactly changing when you move a few blocks over. Now that we have our data coming in dynamically, we are able to move on to the next video where we're gonna handle a lot of the errors that happen inside of callbacks. There's a lot of ways this request can go wrong and we're gonna to wanna to figure out how to recover from errors inside of our callback functions when we're doing asynchronous programming. That's the topic of the next video, so stay tuned, I will see you soon.